they're already in the name. So you don't want to use prefixes intentionally on this for any reason. Don't ever add a prefix. So we know that there are binary ionic. That's when it's got two types. And ternary is when there are more than two types. When I go to ternary, I do the ion sheet. And the net charge is zero. Well, the net charge is zero here, too. <clears throat> So those are the ways I figure out what the compound is for ionic. Covalent and ionic. The next group of compounds that we will deal with a lot are called acids. Now the reason we're going to learn nomenclature of acids now is just so when we're dealing with, I say go pick up hydrochloric acid, you know which one it is based on its formula. If you're going to pick up sulfuric acid, you need to know what it's called as well. So let's look at, for binary acids, for binary acids, acids always include an H in their formula. We will assume that everything that has an H written first is an acid. Okay? We will get to exceptions to the rule in the future, but everything that has an H written first is assumed to be an acid. They are also assumed to be aqueous. So this doesn't have AQ written next to HCl, but it is also assumed to be aqueous. That's one of the things about acids that are unique. To name an acid, all you have to do is put the hydro down first, and then the anion root, that's whatever is included with the H. This is chlorine, so it turns into chloric, and you include the word acid. So HCl becomes hydrochloric acid. So whenever you have a formula that has hydro written first, you know it's probably an acid and it probably is a binary acid, which means it's got two types of elements. For the next one, we've got hydrogen and sulfur. Since there's only sulfur here, the hydrogen is written first. The S is going to be sulfur. So if you change that to something with an IF ending, what would you call it? Sulfuric? What's another option? Sulfuric is one option, that makes sense. Hydrosulfuric is one option. And hydrosulfuric acid is, is one accepted name. The other accepted name that's often used is called hydrosulfic acid. Now, I usually refer to this as hydrosulfic acid. Okay, it's more common in America. Okay. But hydrosulfuric acid does work. As long as you got the hydro first, you're safe. Okay. And the sulfur one is a weird one because of the, how do you end it? Do you end it sulfuric or sulfic? It's okay either way. The next one, HBr, has bromine in it. So this would be called what acid? Hydrobromic acid. And then the last one, we're going to go backwards to try to write the formula for hydrofluoric acid. The great thing about hydrofluor about acids is the H always has a plus one charge. And then the ion that it's connected to, in this case fluorine, is a negative one. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio, so it makes HF, which is hydrofluoric acid. And I wrote aqueous here just to specify that it is HF as an acid. So whenever you have acids and you have binary acids, you use the hydro. You also include the word acid whenever you have an acid to make it really easy to distinguish them. Yes, sir? I'm so they are, but when they're put into a solution, they make an acidic solution. So the unique thing about this, we will talk about this here. This molecule here, if it's just floating around in the air, this is called hydrogen chloride. But if you put it in the water, it becomes hydrochloric acid, which makes it a lot of upset because it's in a different phase. It does change its properties. It's gas. This is hanging out together, floating around. 
And the solution, these two pieces actually break apart. And the solution is what are called dissociated. And we'll learn all about that when we talk more about acids and, and molecules. Right now we're just trying to get a, a naming system so we have a name. But you're definitely right, I hear what you're saying. It is unique that this is a gas and this is a gas, and when they come together they make a, a stable compound that can be put into a liquid as an acid. It is a unique thing. Like sodium is a metal and chlorine is a gas. You combine them together, you make sodium chloride, which is a stable solid you eat. The gas is toxic and will kill you. The sodium explodes on contact with water. When you put them together, you make them. Let's get on fire. Kind of, it really is weird and crazy how it works. That is part of the chemistry. Now, the cool thing, once you know how to name binary acids, what is probably the last thing that we will have to be able to name? We've got binary covalents. Binary ionic, ternary ionic, binary acids, and what's probably the last thing going to be? Ternary acids. <clears throat> now, remember ternary acids, I just remember a quick little line about safety. If you ate an acid, if you ate an acid, it would taste sticky. How would it taste if you ate an acid? Sticky. If you what an acid? Ate an acid, it would taste what? Sticky. If I ate an acid, it would taste sticky. How many of you think that would probably be true? Right? What if you ate an acid in class, would that be a bad idea? Yeah. yeah, yeah, bad idea. An unsafe thing to do. And we'll talk about what it would really taste like, but some of them might not allow you to live through that experience. But if you ate an acid, it would taste sticky. Now, it might, it what? Might be a bad idea for us, for who? Us to do that. If you ate an acid, it would be icky, and it might be a bad idea for who to do it? Us, us to do it. If you ate an acid, it would be icky. So it what? It might be a bad idea for who? Uh, us to do that. If you ate an acid, it would be icky, and so it might be a bad idea for us to do that. If you ate an acid, it would change to icky, and it might, I would change to us for the acids. If you remember that, you can name any ternary acid. So I remember eight is icky, and then the other one is us, but you know, whatever works for you. You might remember this one. You might be like, that might be a bad idea for us. I remember that. And then the other one is the opposite. The cool thing about this is every single name for ternary acids comes from a hydrogen combining with an anion. SO4 is the sulfate anion. SO4 is sulfate. So 8 would turn into what? If you ate an acid, it would be what? Icky. So the sulfate would turn into sulfic. And then it would end with the word acid. So you could call H2SO4 sulfic acid. And some of you don't like sulfic acid. You'd rather call it sulfuric acid. Sounds similar, right? So sulfuric acid is what it's most commonly called. Sulfic acid would technically be correct, but some people would have issue with you if you did it as sulfic acid. Next one, let's look up ClO2 and use your green sheet for ClO2 because I don't even remember what ClO2 is right now. Yeah? Very good. What'd you say? Absolutely. Who can tell me what's so important about these ones? No hydro. Is there still hydrogen in it? Yes. That's why it has the word acid. But no hydro. So if it doesn't have a hydro, is it going to be binary? No. It has to be ternary if it does not have a hydro. It's got to be no hydro. Look on the back of my sheet. No hydro. Look on the back of my sheet. Hydro. Oh, I can do it from the periodic table. Perfect. So ClO2 has got a really cool name. They wouldn't have the ClO2 yet? Chlorite? Chlorite. All right. So it chlorites ourselves. So chlorite would change to what? Or us. For us. So this is for us because it might be a bad idea for us to eat an acid. It might be a bad idea. <clears throat> Let's 
All right, so it's like a blast one, CLO three. CLO three, so we have to look that up on our ion sheet. Chlor eight. So that's chlor eight. So if you made an acid, it would say. All right, not chloridus. Although that sounds close, just change the eight to an it, and that is chloric acid. As was pointed out earlier, hydrochloric acid and chloric acid are very different. Chloric acid has oxygen in it. Hydrochloric acid does not. In a pool, you place chloric acid and you place hydrochloric acid. But if you mix them up, you can kill whatever's in the pool. Hydrochloric acid is also called muriatic acid. Crazy thing about us Americans is we call everything all sorts of different names. Like table salt, you usually don't refer to as sodium chloride. Right? So, the next one is going backwards. So going backwards, nitric acid. So you look at nitric, you go backwards. If it's ic, it turns into what? Eight. So you look on your sheet for nitrate ion. You write out the nitrate ion. Make sure you pay attention to its charge. It has to be neutral for its formula. So the nitrate happens to have a negative one charge. The hydrogens in an acid are always positive one. So this positive one and the negative one cancel out. So HNO3 is nitric acid's formula. You don't have to write the, you can erase the pluses and minuses on the top. So one to one ratio for every one nitrate, you have one hydrogen to make nitric acid. <laughs> Now let's look at the last one, phosphoric acid. You know it's an acid, so you know there's an H in it. You also know it's got phosphoric. So phosphoric turns into what? Phosphate. So you look up the phosphate ion. PO4 negative how many? Three. So PO4 negative three. Okay. What do we have to do with these two? Put them down. Okay, put them down, crisscross. So the three goes down, the one goes across. H3PO4 would be the formula for phosphoric acid. Mariam? Mariam, right? So that's how to do something like phosphoric acid. At this time, we're going to do a little practice with ternary ions. With ternary ions. To do that, what I would like you to do is each group is going to pick up, trade in your cards for a set of polyatomic ion cards that look like these. Make sure you put them in the bag. Keep them in the bag. This one set's not in a bag, which is not your fault and switch them out with your uh, salty eight cards. Uh -huh. They should be in color or black and white. Salty eights will put there, keep them separate. Yep, one set. One set. Number 22, we're going to play this similar to the salty 8 